know, when he was teaching uh, Tai Chi in New York, I think he was teaching more than just Tai Chi as a martial art. I think he was teaching Tai Chi as a way of life. These were the 60s, the young people in America, and especially New York and California, were looking for anything that was new or different, and especially Eastern things and Eastern philosophy. I was a flower child and I went, it's so beautiful, why does it have to be a martial art? <laughs> the thing that I immediately recognized is, this person is special, this master has something, he has something very valuable, and I would like to learn it. I didn't trust Tai Chi. I was brought up in China and I've seen people do it, and I didn't think it was my cup of tea. Well, one of the things that made him unique was that he was a poet, a painter, a calligrapher, a, a physician, and a martial artist, you know. And a lot of the people that I knew from the martial arts, the hard martial arts, karate and kung fu, were there, high level. Tai Chi handles violence differently than the other martial arts. It doesn't attack. It only responds, and it responds in a way that is no more violent than the thing that came in at it. It's not like in a Shaolin kata, you, you get all these fancy positions. The standing rooting is nothing fancy. You just relax your body into your legs and go into the ground. What I remember about fencing with Professor Chung was it was like having the finger of fate on your chest and it was, there was no, thing, no place to go, nothing you could do about it, no way to escape it. Uh, with Professor Chang, you don't know it's coming, it's all, always coming. You mean it's that man who walks around Chinatown as if he was Jesus Christ? They felt that Professor Chang was passing his secrets to the Westerners. Like this is a Chinese secret. Shouldn't teach to the Americans. And my father, that, I think that's why he was so open-minded. He was able to break out of that. <laughs> there was a lot of laughing that happened. He didn't even teach from a technique point of view. He taught from feeling what is happening and can you actually move your body in a way that it finds no spot that can't release and move that is the skill. When, when there's force you yield and when there's an emptiness you fill it up and, and it's, it's totally natural and it's not somebody doing something and it's very powerful as well. And I think that it's extremely important at a time like now when there's so much force against force and when it's what people learn and they think there's no other way to maintain your position beside forcing. And, and there he was, living proof, you know. He would say, you know, I'm not Buddha. He, he didn't pretend to be a spiritual teacher. He had an ego. He wasn't like a fully enlightened being. And if it has no truth in it, it won't last. Whether it's Professor Chen or not, it doesn't matter. If it has that, it will stay up forever. There will be other people picking it up and say it the right way. You feel you're connected to something. And Professor Chen is a good log, he just put himself in there and all those little wet things get dry and start burning. And then we're just like little kindlings, you know. And you feel good because we are made to burn. <laughs>